Lots of people around here. On Earth, there are six billion people, and most of them are poor, which raises the question, why is America rich? Most countries around the I world I ask people in Times Square. Why is America rich? Uh, uh, um, I wish I could really answer that. Lots of people had no clue. That's a really good question. I really okay. don't know. <laughs> I thought some people had odd answers. Because we're greedy? Maybe because we're smarter than everybody else. Some said my question was wrong. Why well, is America rich when we're the uh, well? I don't know we're all that rich anymore. Most countries are poor. Why is America rich? Some sounded like they were brainwashed by the left. We take money from other countries, that's why they're poor. We are taking from other countries and jacking up the price and selling it. Please, here were some smarter answers. Why is America rich? Because we have a lot of resources. More resources. We do, but plenty of poor countries have natural resources too. Why are they poor when we're rich? I think because we have a better structured government than most countries. Meaning democracy? Uh, democracy is really good, but a lot of countries have democracies, but their government still just robs them blind. That's true. India is a democracy. Most countries in Africa are democracies, but for the most part, they still stay poor. So that brings us back to my original question. Why are we prosperous? Two and a half billion people try to get by on $2 a day. Why are they poor when we're relatively rich? Well, we libertarians think we know the richer countries are the ones that are more economically free. But what does economic freedom really mean? Bill Beach from the Heritage Foundation studies these questions and with the Wall Street Journal Heritage publishes the Index of Economic Freedom. And for the past, past 16 years, it's ranked how economically free many countries are. Uh, your index has some surprises on it. Let, let's first look at the countries that are most free. The top, Hong Kong, Singapore, Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, and then the next five, where do we get to the, there we go, eight, the United States, behind Canada, weirdly. So what's going on here? Uh, for the first time in 16 years, the U.S. has dropped out of the, the freest countries in the world because we backed away from the things that make real freedom. Uh, we spent too much money. Uh, that means that people didn't have that money to spend on their businesses and on themselves. We took over businesses. That means we intervened in the workings of the marketplace. So those are the kinds of things that move you away from freedom. That's not good news. All for right, you. maybe we're moving away, but we're at least still number eight. And yeah. you look at those ten countries, they're still pretty, pretty good places to live. Right. Let's look at the countries at the bottom of the list. I don't want to live in any of those places, North Korea, Zimbabwe. Clearly, if you have less economic freedom, life is awful. Yeah, it's, it's, it's awful. It, uh, you're, you're, you're living in such bad conditions that your life expectancy is very short. Your children are going to die in childbirth. There's all kinds of real problems when you don't have economic freedom. It really comes home to nest inside your family. And the bad news is those countries seem to be stuck at the bottom of the list. Those, those governments... Year after year. Yeah, those governments are just not making the moves to bring prosperity to their own people. All right, the moves, which brings up the rankings and yeah. how it's done. The Fraser Institute has its own ranking, which is similar to yours, but we right. picked yours for, for tonight. So uh, le let's break that down. The first on your list, things that make a country free, rule of law. Yeah, well, it's, it's really important that you can go to a court, and if you have a contract dispute, get a judgment from a judge who is not going to be beholden to a political party, is going to be fair about things. And if you can't, it, just think of this this way. You're making contracts with people who are not in your family. They're, they're strangers, really. And, and you want to make sure that they perform. And when they do, fine, you're creating wealth. When they don't, you want to take them to court and say, you, you were supposed to perform. Without that contract, Without that rule of law to go... Why invest? You, yeah, ex exactly. You're, you're not going to take the risks, you're not going to make the money, and as, as a consequence, the wealth is not going to be created, and people will be poorer than what they actually are. It's a subtle thing. People don't think about the role of judges and laws in economic growth, but every economist that's looked at this said that's one of the most important things you can have. 
also important, secure property rights. Yeah, right, exactly right. It's part of rule of law. It is part of rule of law. If, if, I, if I buy a land to put, put a farm on that land, but then the government says, well, I'm going to take it away from you. Uh, what's my incentive to really get into that land and make it productive or, or a building? What's my incentive to really make it the best building and to the best place for a business to locate? Well, you know, business grows when you do the best things and when you can get the benefits of all of that uh, in investment for you. Well, that's how wealth grows. And as wealth grows, people get more prosperous and they have more income. Freedom from corruption. Uh, I tell you what, that's so important. Uh, if if I have to open, if I have a business and I want to expand it, and I have to figure out, well, what do I have to bribe the local government official? If I don't have enough money for the bribe and I can't do what I want want to in that business, it's not going to going to going to grow, John. Corruption is a real stopper when it comes to business growth and, and as a consequence stops wealth creation. The writer Michael Lewis, who wrote The Blind Side, has an article in Vanity Fair about Greece and he writes, it's simply assumed that anyone working for the government is meant to be bribed. Government ministers have multi-million dollar mansions. Right, and you can go to country after country that has poor a you know, large population that's, that's poor and you're more than likely going to find a country with a lot of political corruption. Government spending. Now you touched on this, but it's hard to see how that correlates to freedom. Well, uh, when the government is spending in excess of their basic needs to keep a court system in place and a military to protect our private property, then they're to actually, transfer wealth. Yeah, they're actually taking money away from private producers of wealth and spending it on them on themselves, and that means higher so taxes. Individuals in the have less economic. Yeah, freedom. absolutely. There's there's less there's less money in your family. There's less money in your businesses, and so there's less income generally. And the last one I'll mention, you have more, but labor freedom. Yeah. It's really important for laborers to be able to travel around a country to find the best job. In some countries, you can't do that. And an individual would be reluctant to open a business, which I would think is key to wealth creation, if there are all these rules heaped upon you. I, I did a TV show called Is America Number One, where I went around the world to compare countries, and I tried to open a business here in New York City and also in Hong Kong, the country that's most economically free on his list. Even a clueless American can open a business in a day. In my hometown, New York City, it takes weeks. I'd have to go to the licensing department and get a state tax number, a federal tax number. So do you have the federal ID number? Apply to the buildings department, the zoning board, and more. Here in Hong Kong, handing in one form was all I had to do. Thank you, sir. The next day, I was in an indoor shopping center, running my own business, Stossel Enterprises, selling ABC stuff. $10. Well, trying to sell it. Apparently, not that many people here want ABC Frisbees and yo-yo. Well, no one promises you a successful business, but this opportunity to try. ABC yo-yo. Even dumb ideas is what's made Hong Kong thrive. So I could open that in one day in Hong Kong. I did one in Delaware, which took a week or two. I didn't even try in New York City. That's one reason America has fallen on your list? Uh, well, the longer it takes to open a business, the, the longer it takes to get really good ideas out there that produce higher incomes. It takes almost a year in, in India. Just think of that. That country needs to innovate. It takes a year to open a new business. No wonder it isn't growing as fast as it should. All right, on your list, we're eight. Canada is seven. Yeah. Canada. Right. Think of Canada know. is right. a socialist place. How embarrassing is that? <laughs> um, well, uh, Canada has socialized medicine and has some pockets of socialization, which a lot of countries have that have come from that European experience. But what they're doing now is they're lowering their taxes. They didn't interfere with their banking system during this recession. They did the right kinds of moves. And as a consequence, a lot of U.S. firms now are looking at Canada as a better place to do business than the United States. So we're thinking, well, you know, Canada's growth rates are probably going to be stronger in the future than the United States as a consequence. Singapore, number two. And yet, I hear these, in Singapore, there are rules against chewing gum. You have to get a prescription if you right. want some nicotine gum. They've censored books, they've banned movies. Sure. It's economically free. 
it, it is economically free. Politically, they've chosen some routes that I, I wouldn't go on. I mean, I, I love chewing gum, but, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but, but, but on economic freedom, th their population is increasingly wealthy because they have embraced the institutional framework that we've been talking about that creates wealth.